We'll call our December 21st meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilman Woodford. Present. Councilman Henry. Here. Mayor Shelton. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Here. Councilman Womack. Here. All present. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those that wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Councilman Henry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are a grateful people, grateful for your love for us, grateful for the season that we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, grateful for the community in which we live and the opportunity to serve it. Help us now with your grace and wisdom to do, uh, to do this kind of service in a, in a good way. And we believe that we receive these things now in the name of your son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item 3, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes or corrections? Mm -hmm. Mayor, we have no changes to the thank, agenda. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Uh, under old business 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on December 7th, 2017. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Five B. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0171120 amendments to various sections of the zoning code to revise provisions for bed and breakfast homes and to insert provisions relative to short term rental properties. Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members, um, as we discussed at first reading, the most significant aspect of the proposed amendments would be to allow only owner occupied bed and breakfast short term rental properties in <coughs> single family residential districts. Non-owner occupied short-term rental properties would only be allowed in the same zoning districts where we allow multifamily residential dwellings and commercial uses. Provisions are on the screen. The ordinance has been revised to reflect the revisions approved by the council at first reading. That includes the assertion under the proposed provisions for bed and breakfast homes limiting the use to a maximum of three guest rooms and the deletion of the proposed exemption allowing dwellings to be rented for up to 14 days in, in a 12-month consecutive period. We have had, and I think you've seen several comments since first reading, several emails uh, from citizens on various parts of the ordinance, but we would recommend for adoption. Thank you. Is there a motion? <clears throat> so moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. 5C, consider on second and final reading ordinance 0171121, modifications of prior recommendation for closure and declaration of surplus alleys located off South Oak Avenue and Depot Street and portions of the <coughs> south right of way of Depot Street, and consider for approval of acceptance of properties as rights of way for South Oak Avenue, South Cedar Avenue, Depot Street, and an alley located between South Cedar and South Oak Avenue. Mr. Mills. Mayor and Council members, this is the general location, and this identifies the properties that would be. Um, declared a surplus, surplus in the properties that would be acquired by the city. Um, the proposed closure and abandonment and property exchange was approved by the Planning Commission. The Planning Department concurs with this recommendation. We've had no calls or comments since first reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. 5D. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0171122 acceptance of Tennessee Avenue north of Interstate 40 as a street for city maintenance upon completion of construction and establishing restrictions for access. Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members, this is uh, Tennessee Avenue, which is the street um, we were required to construct as part of the fifth interchange on Interstate 40. The Planning Commission recommended for acceptance of Tennessee Avenue north of I-40 as a city street upon completion of construction and verification from Public Works Department that it complies with all applicable uh, construction standards and for the approval of the restrictions prohibiting access to the street from any point not approved by the City of Cookville. The Planning Department concurs with this recommendation. We've had no calls or comments since first reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? <clears throat> all vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Under new business, 7A, hold a public hearing and consider on first reading an ordinance 0171226 <coughs> amending the budget of the general fund of the City of Cookville, Tennessee for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2018. Ms. Emil. <coughs> Mayor and Council, um, this ordinance will amend the budget for the general fund for the current fiscal year. We are proposing increasing budgeted capital expenditures by $1,300,000. 
This amendment will budget funds for the property purchases for Dogwood Park expansion and a new police headquarters that you all approved at the last council meeting. Um, the capital amount for the police department will increase by $600,000. For the Leisure Services Department, $625,000. And for Public Works Department, $75,000. And if you recall, part of the agreement for the property purchase for the police headquarters um, requires the city to do some road improvements in that area. So we wanted to head, go ahead and put some money in the budget in case they get started and spend some of that before June 30th. So the total increase in the general fund budgeted expenditures will be 1,300,000. We have no new revenues to offset that. That'll come out of our fund balance. We projected starting the fiscal, or we actually started this fiscal year with $16.8 million in general fund. And we had planned to purchase or to spend about 1.5 million on this land. Um, so we're actually under that and we're gonna project finishing the fiscal year now with $15,172,000 in fund balance. And I would recommend your approval. Thank you. Since this is a first reading, at this time we'll open the public hearing portion of the meeting. Would anyone like to speak to this matter? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Obvious votes. Motion. Came. Thank you. 7B, consider authorizing the city manager to execute settlement agreement with Sheridan Family Enterprises relative to condemnation cases for the construction of Tennessee Avenue and authorize the city manager to acquire property by negotiation or eminent domain for the sewer extension. Mike Davidson. Mayor and council members, uh, as part of the uh, construction of Tennessee Avenue, uh, the city acquired two parcels from the Sheridan Family Partners. Uh, the last few months, city staff has been in discussion with uh, the family as well as their representatives to try to uh, settle these condemnation cases. As part of this agreement tonight, uh, the Sheridans have accepted the, uh, would accept the amounts that have already been tendered to the courts for those two parcels in full and final settlement of all claims. And they agreed to dismissal of the uh, condemnation cases. Also as part of the agreement, the city and the county, or the city, and the Sheridans would have a 50-50 cost share to extend sewer uh, to the uh, fifth interchange area just north of the fifth interchange. And as part of that cost share, the Sheridans will also receive a $38,542.20 credit toward their 50% share of the, uh, of the uh, cost share agreement to get that sewer installed. Uh, the Sheridans will also convey to the city uh, sufficient easements to install the sewer. Um, in addition, uh, if necessary, as pointed out in the agenda item, as, as you read, the city would acquire by negotiations or eminent domain any additional easements that might be needed for the construction of that sewer line. And also like to point out that the Sheridans would be responsible for the extension of the sewer um, on further north onto their property itself. There's a map, James, if you don't mind. This is kind of a layout of the uh, proposed sewer line. <clears throat> the city installed a sewer under Interstate 40. It's, it sits just north of Interstate 40 on some Sheridan property as well. They'll give us easements across that property. Uh, we'll have to work out uh, agreements with property owners in Park West to, to uh, run the sewer line through there. And then again, we'll eventually get back on the city owned property just north of the interstate where it says, uh, pump station that's the the location that the city would uh would terminate this project with that pump station there uh there's another slide just to give you an aerial view of the location to try to help <coughs> maybe make it more sense again that's the uh, basics of the uh, of the agreement and i'll be happy to try to answer any questions or mr raider may have some more to share with you yeah i just wanted to add the one thing is that uh, the sheridans have also agreed in the future to give the city an easement for the sewer to go northwardly uh, uh, perpendicular with the interstate uh, so the sewer can be uh, extended future in, in the future without us having to acquire easements in the future. And I think on the slide right before this one, it showed a corridor uh, where that easement would be. Mr. Kelly and his staff uh, decided that that corridor would be the best route for the future expansion. So we won't have a a problem acquiring uh, easements for that in the future if that becomes necessary so and as mr davidson pointed out this the city and the sheridans will pay 50 50 to get the sewer to the pump station but then after that it's the developer or the sheridans responsibility to uh, continue to construct the sewer to serve their property very good is there a motion so moved second motion a second any discussion all vote 
five yes votes the motion carries thank you 7c consider authorizing the city manager to execute change order number one for the royal oak county farm road lp sewer project uh, mr kelly mayor and council we've had a request <coughs> for uh to, for sanitary sewer service out in the boyd ferris 111 interchange there and back in october we came to the council with a engineering amendment to our current engineering contract on the royal oak project council approved a a, a design for this area out on the boyd ferris road uh, once we had that design done we have contacted and talked to the contractor on the uh, royal oak sewer project and have negotiated him using he, he's agreed to use the unit prices on that project and so we're here tonight seeking council's authorization to uh, do change order number one on this uh, the royal oak county farm road sewer project that would install the sewer over on this uh, boyd ferris highway 111 interchange <laughs> And that change order would be in the amount of $72,590.40, which will add about 2,400 feet to, the, to that project of sewer line, and it will add 90 days to that project. And I'd recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So I'll move. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. 7D, consider authorizing the city manager enter an engineering contract for the wastewater treatment <coughs> plant headworks screening replacement project. Mr. Kelly. Yes, Mayor and Council, we have a uh, some equipment down at the wastewater plant that's getting at the end of its useful life and need to work in a replacement schedule. Uh, we've put it in our budget to start that in this budget, budget year. Uh, we have negotiated a contract with CTI. Uh, which is an engineer has done a lot of work for us just finished up a project down there and it's not to exceed uh, the $117,500 it will do uh, prepare the design the development report suitable for TDEC review we're going to replace the screens and the, uh, the screening conveyor the, uh, the screw top washing compacting unit down there uh, it will basically go through the bidding and uh, RPR services, and we would recommend your. I think I've got a picture here. That that's part. It's not a very good picture, but it's <clears throat> this unit here, and it comes out on the conveyor, and it goes down probably 30 or 40 feet down in to the headworks of the plant, and that's what we're going to replace. I'd recommend your approval. Is there a motion? So so move. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Sorry. All vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Seven E, consider authorizing the city manager to enter into an engineering contract for miscellaneous improvements for the water treatment plant, Mr. Kelly. Mayor and Council, we're here seeking uh, authorization to, for the city manager to enter into a engineering contract with Smith Segment Reed to design some improvements to our water treatment plant. Uh, this is going to just encompass a lot of odds and ends that need to be done at plant, sort of rebuild some old equipment and replace some. Uh, repairs that need to be done we're going to do uh, it'll include a basin repair leak repairs some clarifier repairs add some chlorine automatic chlorine shutoff valves replace we're going to replace the yard lighting there like we did at the uh, wastewater plant project with some led type lighting uh, replace the carbon silo repairs there to some equipment there uh, we've got a lake level transmitter that's out so all of those we've negotiated enough to exceed contract uh, an in the amount of $94,856 and would recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Thank you. Carries. Thank you. All right. That concludes our agenda portion of the meeting. We have time for citizens that would like to requ uh, speak to the council on non-agenda items. Do we have anyone that would like to do that? Council members, do you have anything? Uh, this is our last meeting for this year. Uh, it's been a busy year. Uh, sometimes we feel like we're drinking out of a fire hydrant up here. It's coming at us so fast, but we've got great department heads. Uh, councils working together, uh, trying to make a great city even greater. Uh, I want to you know, say thank you for everybody uh, on the behalf of me and, you know, and my family and what Cookville means to us. And I hope everybody has a happy new year and a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Anybody else? Same thing. Merry, Merry Christmas from uh, from all of us, and wish you a, a safe and healthy and prosperous new year. We are adjourned.